Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name's David and this is the top 10 tricks that you can do as walk around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. You have once again arrived for a magic question. We are gonna answer a magic question. Been doing a lot of top 10s lately because uh, Apparently you guys like the top tens. You, <laughs> you like top tens. And so someone else asked for a top 10 list of walk around magic. Now, walk around magic obviously is uh, stuff that could be cards, could be coins, but it's all being carried on your pocket. And chances are you're doing walk around because you were hired, okay? So you're walking around a wedding, you're doing restaurant magic, you're walking around a corporate event, something like that, which means you gotta do impactful stuff, right? And you have to keep everything on your person. Everything you have that you're gonna perform with is a trick you are carrying somewhere in your pockets and hopefully, you know, it, uh, carried well. You're not just walking around with a giant suitcase or a, you know, a fanny pack or, <laughs> or a backpack, right? You wanna look presentable, you wanna look presentable but yet have uh, small enough items, but yet impactful items on your person. So I wanna talk about that, but gotta acknowledge something. Gotta acknowledge something. Uh, we've talked a lot already about effects that you can do with walk around. So uh, there's, there's nine I've already mentioned. So I'm gonna show you a quick nine, okay? So you're getting a bonus list. This is a bonus list. So in addition to the top 10 list that we're all gonna do, I'm gonna go back and recap, okay? Here are nine tricks, nine tricks, that are great for walk around that we've already mentioned in other videos. So first off, you got sponge balls. Uh, don't forget, kids like this too. And a lot of times when you're hired uh, at places, it's nice to have something for kids. So sp kids and adults like sponge balls. Ignition, uh, key through bill, fantastic effect, very easy to carry, very lightweight. Ring flight, uh, any borrowed ring, right, uh, gets transported to somewhere else. And so this is uh, a great trick to do, very lightweight to carry, and the fact that you use a borrowed ring, awesome. Uh, invisible deck, slays all the time, everywhere. Uh, this is a great trick, especially if you're not a card magician and you wanna just carry a deck of cards around so it looks like you did a card trick, invisible deck is awesome. Chop cup routine, uh, this is also awesome because you know it only involves one cup, uh, you want to check out Craig Petty's new release. It looks fantastic. Uh, Hundy 500, this is tricks with bills, right? Or I would even throw in Miss Made Bill in here. Uh, you, doing tricks with money is always a, a good thing. The hot rod or a paddle effect. Again, kids are probably going to be there. It's very small, very lightweight, easy to carry. Uh, crazy man's handcuffs, something with a rubber band. You know, you put two rubber bands around your wrist and you got a magic trick uh, right there or a whole routine with rubber bands. So, ex you know, awesome. And then extreme burn. That's another one we've mentioned before. I think that one is great as well. All right, so 10 tricks. 10 tricks that are gonna work great for walk around. Uh, I believe I might have mentioned even a couple of these already too, but I'm gonna try to give you some new resources. And for our number 10 and our number nine, I'm gonna give you free resources. That's right. So for our number 10 and our number nine, I'm actually gonna give you links so that you can go out and learn these tricks for free best tutorials out there for free. I'm, gonna get, I'm giving you free magic tricks, that's right. Number 10 is Card Warp. This is from Roy Walton, and it's two cards, right? Two cards. It's a card through card, uh, amazing inversion. It's such a beautiful effect. Uh, Khan Octogon teaches this out on YouTube. I'm gonna put his link below so you can go and get a tutorial for that. Number nine is the Biddle trick. This is a fantastic card trick. Uh, of course, Elmer Biddle, right? Uh, spectator selects a card, you show them five options. Their card is obviously one of those options. Uh, you show the five cards then face down and magically one of those cards disappears and it ends up face up back in the deck. I got a link to Alex Pandrea teaching this. Uh, he's got a fantastic routine. Next up, three card Monty. 
three card money. This is a crowd pleaser no matter where you go. And everyone's interested in it because it has to do with gambling. Uh, World's Greatest Magic has a whole DVD dedicated to this. Uh, please check out Skinner's uh, gimmick effect. Uh, there's some easy gimmick stuff out there too. Uh, I think I've mentioned Stand Up Monty before. Uh, Daryl, I cannot, cannot pass by Daryl because he's got some great, great teaching. Uh, Darwin Ortiz, I know we've mentioned Color Monty before. Uh, John Gustaferro, Gordon Bean's uh, Monty 3.0 is fantastic. Check out those resources. Number eight is a coins across routine or uh, scotch and soda. Uh, for coins across, uh, you got some great options out there. Pop Hayden, Tommy Wonder, uh, World's Greatest Magic. You know, of all the plots that make up coin magic, coins across has always had a special place. Uh, for close-up magicians. Audiences always seem to be intrigued by the idea of coins traveling invisibly between the performer's hands. You wanna do scotch and soda? I mean, there's so many tricks you can do with scotch and soda. Coins through, co coins through table, uh, vanishing a coin from the spectator's fist, causing two coins to fade into thin air, passing a coin through your body, uh, a coin appears in the closed hand of the spectator, so much more you can do with that. Next up, we got Powerball 60 by Richard Sanders and Bill Abbott. Uh, this is $25. It's a great trick because it kind of is a little bit like gambling, a little bit like money, but it's a, it's a lottery trick. It's an easy to do, simple lottery effect. Spectator thinks of any number between one and 60. They imagine that number as their secret winning lottery number and you hand them your used scratch tickets and ask to see how many winners they would have had. Simple to do, 100% accurate, Instantly repeatable, no sleight of hand, completely examinable, nothing to replace. Coming up next is one of my favorites, Pointless by Gregory Wilson. Uh, I believe this is about $45. It uses the standard uh, pen through bill prop, but Greg's routine is not pen through bill. In his routine, he holds an ordinary ballpoint pen and he challenges the spectator to follow which way the uh, pen is pointing. And no matter how easy it seems or where they think the point is, it's always in a different direction. And it's, you can repeat it over and over again and the spectator will never catch you out. It is such a beautiful and magical routine, perfect for walk around. Another classic, another perfect for walk around, uh, everybody's favorite crowd pleaser, ambitious card, or, or, or I would add card to box. Card to box or card to impossible location, uh, this, this trick is fantastic. Uh, for ambitious card, I would definitely check out uh, World's Greatest Magic, check out Harry Lorraine, check out Larry Jennings, Darwin Ortiz, Tommy Wonder, uh, Masuda's Boxing Match, uh, Roy Cosby, Jack in the Box, uh, Piff has one in his Penguin Magic Lechker. Uh, I've reviewed Tommy Wonder's Ring to Card Box. I know it's not the same, but it's, it's, still, it's still in that same wheelhouse. And I've also reviewed Vision Box by Jao Miranda. Check that one out as well. Next up, we got Ninja Rings. Uh, of course, it's just like it sounds. It's a smaller version of the uh, linking rings effect. And I know a lot of people wanted me to add this to the close-up top 10. I don't, I don't know. To me, I've never really thought of linking rings as being a close-up trick. This feels more like walk around, more like parlor, more like stage. Uh, you can get a set for around 40 bucks. And uh, for routine though, I would definitely check out Michael O'Brien. I've reviewed his uh, DVD. Uh, he's the best. He is really the best for Ninja Rings. I can't recommend anyone else any higher. Number three, I would say if you have the pocket space, definitely think about a Rubik's Cube trick. Rubik's Cube magic is still hot. Uh, anything by Henry Harrius is gonna be awesome. So I would start with Rubik's Dream. If that's uh, unavailable to you or a little bit too expensive, then I would check out his Insta Light. Okay, check out that. Number two, especially if you're at a wedding and you have couples there, Anniversary Waltz by Doc Eason. Uh, this is fantastic. And you can find this, of course, for sale by itself from Garrett Thomas and Doc Eason. It's a perfect trick for weddings. Uh, can't, you, need to rec you need to learn this. If you're gonna do walk around, you need to learn anniversary waltz, no question. And number one, card to wallet. It's a crowd pleaser. Uh, everybody loves card to wallet. There's so many great ways to do it, whether you do it uh, completely with skill or whether you do it with uh, trick cards or whether you do it with a duplicate or whether you do it with a trick wallet. 
right? There's so many plots and methods to card to wallet. Uh, I couldn't even go into all of them, even if I wanted to. So just know that card to wallet is somewhere in the back of your mind, that that's something you want to do. And then you, you know, you're looking out. You're just looking out for wallets, looking out for tricks, looking out for routines. Uh, go ask some people that you respect uh, what card to wallet they like. But uh, again, so easy to carry. Chances are you've already got the materials on you. You know, you're carrying your wallet, you got some cards with you. Uh, spectators always love it when they get to sign it and then keep it as a souvenir. It's a great story for them to tell. Uh, yeah, number one. All right, so let me give you some tips. Okay, let me give you some walk around tips because uh, it's not, it's not as easy as you might think. I know, uh, it, you know, we do, we kind of stroll, right? We all do kind of a little bit of street magic because, you know, we're always out walking and we got some tricks on us and somebody asks us uh, to show them a trick. But getting hired for an event, that's a little different. Okay, that's a little different. Uh, first of all, you can't just stand around. Okay, you can't just stand around. If they've hired you, you're there to perform. You need to go and find someone to perform for. They don't want to look around and say, okay, where's their magician? And oh, no, he's over there and he's standing by the punch bowl. Okay, that's, that's, that's not an option, okay? You, you're hired to be there, you're hired to perform, so you gotta perform. If someone has kind of shown no interest in you, you gotta go and find someone else, okay? You gotta keep, you gotta keep moving, <laughs> okay? You're the performer, you were hired to be there. Uh, do more with less, okay? Again, your pocket space is limited, right? And I, I think carrying a backpack or a fanny pack, that's unprofessional. So uh, like we said, card to wallet, you're already carrying your wallet with you anyway. You already have a deck of cards on you anyway. Uh, you could do a couple tricks with a deck of cards. Don't worry about the deck of cards. You bought that deck of cards for that performance and it's gonna be ruined by the end of the night, okay? Because you're gonna do card warp, you're gonna tear cards up, cards are gonna be signed. You know, just take a deck of cards with you that can be destroyed and use that deck up as much as possible. You're doing anniversary waltz with it, right? Um, carry as little as possible, but do as much with that pocket space as possible. Um, and, you know, and, and be nice, be nice to your pockets, okay? That's another little add-on. Don't just overstuff everything. And you should remember where everything is. When you practice, practice with the uh, items in your pockets. Just practice in the clothes that you would use, all right? And please practice, okay? Please practice. You need a trick that's gonna grab them at the beginning and kind of escalate. You need a trick that's a good closer. Uh, you need a trick, you need an opening trick that's fast, okay? Fast, fast, fast. You wanna grab their attention and if they're not interested, move on. I think that's, 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 a, great, that's a great tip. You know, if they're not interested, then just politely thank them and walk away. <laughs> Nobody likes an annoying, you know, if they're engaged in conversation and you walk up and you say, hey, can I show you something? And they see it and they applaud, but you can clearly see they wanna go back to their conversation. That's fine, you know, you did, you did your thing and move on. But if you go and grab somebody's attention and you can clearly see that they're engaged, then you start going into tricks that involve a little more, are a little longer, have more audience participation, right? They, they kind of build on each other. Uh, and don't forget the staff. Don't forget the staff. They're, you know, staff people are there. They're hired to be there as well. But uh, I, most of them will stop and, and watch you perform. And again, you know, if the people who hired you or the, the bride's parents or the bride and groom hired you uh, or you know somebody from corporate hired you if they're walk, looking around and seeing where you are and they still see you're performing It doesn't matter if you're you're performing for the wait staff. Uh, I think anybody walking by Will stop and watch so that, uh, that's a good uh, reminder as well and uh, You know and always ask politely be nice You know you walk up and you say excuse me. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt but uh, the bride and groom have hired me to perform for tonight's event, and I was just curious, you, would you mind if I showed you something really quick, right? Make sure they know that you're not gonna take up too much time. And if they say yes, you know, do your little thing and say, hey, can I show you something else right after that? And if they say yes, then keep going, okay? But if, if not, just say, hey, thank you for your time. Have a wonderful, have a wonderful night, you know? Be as polite as possible. You want to. You don't. Nobody likes a, a rude, rude magician, right? Um, and and just look for people. You know, like I was saying earlier, don't you don't ever don't ever stand around. Not everybody knows everyone at those events. There's a lot of people who come to weddings that don't know anybody. 
you know, and the, like they know the bride or they know the groom and now nobody's talking to them. You want to zero in and find those people. Uh, not everybody likes to dance. You know, when everyone starts dancing and you're thinking, all right, everyone's dancing. You know, my, my, time, is, my time is done. No, there's a lot of people that don't dance, okay? There's a lot of people that don't dance. There's a lot of people that don't drink. You find those people and engage them, okay? That's why, that's why you were hired. You were hired to make sure that everyone has fun. So just because it looks like everyone's having fun on the dance floor doesn't mean everyone is, okay? Go find, I don't dance, <laughs> okay? I don't dance. Go find, go find the guy that looks like me that's embarrassed and trying to hide uh, behind a water glass. Go find that guy uh, and, uh, and show them some magic. All right, so I hope that helps you out. I hope uh, that gave you some ideas for some walk around effects. And of course, this is where we wanna hear from you. Okay, that's what makes the internet great is uh, you don't just have to listen to me. I am not the only voice and I shouldn't be the only voice. Uh, the internet is a place where community is built. And so I'm sure you've got some wonderful ideas and some additions that could be added to some walk around effects. So if you've got some walk around ideas that were not mentioned, uh, certainly list those below. Or if you want to affirm any of the tricks that I mentioned and say yes, definitely anniversary wallets or definitely uh, card to wallet. Uh, put those comments down below as well. Thanks for watching guys. Keep those questions coming. I love them and I uh, look forward to answering more questions for you. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, would you like to learn a magic trick? You would. Did you know I have a second channel? That's right. I have a second channel where I teach beginning level magic tricks. Magic Channel Card Tricks is a place that you can go to to learn tricks with ordinary items you can find around the house. Paper clips, rubber bands, pens, and of course, decks of cards. I teach beginning level card tricks, simple card tricks, simple card forces that anybody could learn. I also review magic kits. So if you go buy a magic kit from the store, uh, your local Walmart or Target, uh, or you get a magic kit for Christmas, I'll go over exactly what's inside. And I'll even teach you how to perform with some of those tricks that you get inside those kits. Plus, I'm even gonna give you video instruction to very simple, very inexpensive tricks that you can pick up at your favorite magic store. Sometimes you get those tricks and the instructions are just on a tiny little piece of typewritten paper and you have no idea how to do that trick. Don't throw that trick away. Don't put it in a box. Come back to Magic Channel Card Tricks and I will teach you how to use that trick as well. Or maybe you're not a beginner. Maybe you're not a beginner, but maybe you have a niece or a nephew or a little brother or sister that is, that you could share this channel with them. This is a great, safe place, kid-friendly, where they can learn beginning level magic. Make sure you head on over to Magic Channel Card Tricks. Give my videos a like. Subscribe to that channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for being a part of Magic Orthodoxy.